Saparista are proud sponsors of the Wonderbird Show. Treat yourself to the wonderful taste of the Mediterranean supplied by local artisans. <laughs> And welcome back to uh, to Wonder Birds and Linda Lusari and the gorgeous Debbie Pavers. Thank yes. you, Debbie, for being an honorary Wonder Bird. Yes, yes Debbie, you look so lovely today. Beautiful. Well, I'm surprised she does. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't at a party last night, but obviously you three were at a very amazing party. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it. Well, it all started. Uh, 14 hours later, everyone's going. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I just put a post on a, a, a website called Nextdoor and said, you know, I'm sick of people not meeting in real life. It's really getting me down. You know, how many people feel the same? You know, I think there must be some guys out there because I'm single that, that want to meet face to face and not everything online. And I got 475 replies. Wow. Wow. Not, not just from, men, from, from women as well. And so they said, please put it in a group. And I put it in a group. And last night we had our first event. And I must say, Debbie, you did an absolutely amazing <laughs> job. It's a fantastic DJ, fantastic singers. Food was amazing. Oh. And the drinks, honestly, and the sunshine. My and goodness. the entertainment with you two, your two girls, uh, you. Lucy and Talia. Oh, my goodness. What great singers, huh? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, proud mothers. But it yeah. wasn't it wasn't an incredible event. We met yeah. so many lovely, lovely people. Linda was there. She, well, shouldn't really have been there because she's not single, but she had to come. She was there <laughs> as a mummy. A mummy. I, I was helping a little bit, wasn't I? I was helping a little bit. But actually, I was playing Cupid and I did quite well. Did you? Did you? Wow. Well, did you? I, 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 no, Cupid, not for myself, for everyone else. Oh, did I mean. you? So yeah. who was that, Linda? Who did you do well, that? I think I may have found you and Mandy, and I found Ooh. my um, son's girlfriend's father. I found, might have found him a woman as well. Ooh! Yes, I was. Well, you never know. Watch night. the space. You didn't, you didn't find me a man, though, Linda. Well, oh. you you're capable of finding your own, Debbie, aren't you? <laughs> I, do, I honestly, with my track record, I bloody well doubt it. But that's <laughs> another story. <laughs> that's for another show. Huh? But no, you, had, show. You, had, you did eventually enjoy yourself, Debbie, didn't you? After oh, you I, did, I did. I did really enjoy myself. Yeah, I had a, a great time. But Debbie, you've yeah. been married for a long time, haven't you? I have. Yeah, I've been married. Uh, I've been married before. I was married to my first husband for eleven years, and then I married to um, Ian. <laughs> I nearly forgot his name then. <laughs> 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 to me, for nearly 30. So we've been for a long time. Woman, how are you look about seven and a half? Oh, I was going to say, you don't look old enough. 64, gosh. You're absolutely beautiful. Keep taking, the, take, taking the vitamins. I take um, uh, collagen in the morning in a drink. I, I take, take collagen drink. every day yeah. as well. I seriously think it works. I've how heard about you? this. How can you be 64? You look absolutely amazing. Thank you. Wait, Unbelievable. You we're all of an age, aren't we? So, you know, just keep wearing the makeup and staying as fit as you can and eating the right things. Yeah, I drink, of course, drink. you know, you've got to have something, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got to have a drink of wine. Just a little tipple. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I'm sure you all look radiant this morning, considering that you were out last night and partying. Well, actually, I didn't well, know I hardly really drank anything last night. I didn't think I could, really, because I had so many people to talk to. And the last thing they were, I said, I'm Debbie, I'm, I'm yes, so this. <laughs> It was very, it was a fabulous party. And um, and I think honestly, Debbie, you should have loads of these. And and please, Debbie, the um Debbie P, I'm gonna say, <laughs> please come to the next one. I'm inviting I would love one. To. Whereabouts do you live, Debbie? I live in Yorkshire. Ah, so you see, you could yes, help us do, do a Yorkshire version because we're Absolutely. gonna do them all over the country, I think. Yes. I have a single friend, and she used to be married to the bass player in David Bowie and the Spiders from Mars, but bless him. Well, you know, I, I know Trevor and I know who she is. You know Trevor? Yeah, you know Trevor? Yeah, it's Shelley. His wife's a Oh, no, no, I, I knew her. I knew his previous wife. wife. Anne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anne. Well, I know yeah. Anne as well, but she's uh, yeah. been for 25 years and bless him, he's, he, he um, is up in heaven watching us all, I'm sure. But and she's Sarah, been, I, she's I remember I used to babysit for Sarah. Sarah. His, his daughter and yes, I used to Sarah. babysit for, for David's son Zoe. I used to have, I've yeah. known them I knew David and the spiders from Mars my whole life. So um gosh, wow. Gosh, small world. Real small yeah. world. It really is. 
really is. Yes, so, and, it, and actually, this is a very good segue, Debbie, that you've given us. Segue? Because we do oh, yeah. have a band coming in, don't we, Debbie? Yeah, yeah, we certainly do. And this band is the most incredible band. And actually, um, you'll know a connection, won't you, Debbie? Yeah, yeah. I think with, with Brian Cox, Professor yeah. Brian Cox. In fact, Absolutely. he's a keyboard player in the band. Oh, there they were the ones that sang things. Well, I no, know you had better. <laughs> <laughs> It should be the anthem of the last 16 months, in my opinion, you know, because things have got to get better. They're getting there slowly, aren't they? But we they need certainly to are. They so certainly are. Your being and your parties that you're throwing that like that, that's making a massive difference to people's mental health and well-being and, and believing who they are and, and getting themselves out there again. You know, honestly, you. it was it was so cute because we were, I was sort of on the front table and there was ladies coming in looking really tentatively, walking down the pathway on their own. And one lady said to me, I nearly didn't come that because I was scared. So please don't be scared. It's so it's so laid back here. Yeah. And she said, I haven't danced and I haven't been out for two years. Gosh. <gasps> I said, well, well done you. Well Absolutely. done. Isn't that fabulous? Well yeah, done, Debbie. Brilliant. Yeah, Debbie A. Great job, Deb. Great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's bring the boys in, shall we? Absolutely. Well, I've got very exciting news, girls, because today we've got the amazing pop group, a band, and, and dance band, D Ream, Ooh. with <laughs> Peter Connor and Al <laughs> McKenzie. Hello, Hi, guys. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you guys? You look gorgeous. <laughs> That's very I've, been out, clean. I've been out in the sun for the last two or three days. I've just discovered there's a, the, um, the, there's a lake outside my house here which feeds into the North Atlantic. It's very, very cold, but it does wake you up when you jump in it for a swim. Oh, I bet. Oh, so, you know what? I am... Um, the heating's broken. I know it sounds really posh, doesn't it? The heating's broken on my swimming pool and it's like ice. And I've got used to swimming in cold water. It's Apparently so it's really good for you. Really good yeah. for you. I'm, I'm waiting for that to happen. I'll get back to you on that one. But I've only got <laughs> on my second day of cold water swimming. But oh, i got to wow. say, the, the, the kids have come down from um, Derry, London Derry, where I come from. And this is only a 10, 15 minute drive. And it's wonderful to see everyone out there uh, enjoying the space, you know, from, from kids right up to people with paragliders. Yeah. You know, whatever that yeah. is. You know. I have no idea how you do it, but I can see it in front of me as it passes by. Yeah. It's just wonderful. Yeah, and the sun and uh, dancing on the water like diamonds, you know, it's just wonderful. That's oh, beautiful. Oh, actually, that sounds like a song. Dancing on the water like diamonds. That's <laughs> let's let's start. Okay, I'll go. Thank dancing you many on ideas. the water Please. like oh, diamonds. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, you get the beat, really get the beat okay, going. <laughs> okay. Talk to you after. <laughs> so what have you been up to in lockdown i mean obviously you both look so great it obviously suits you to um to hang out and do all your fabulous things that you do but tell us about what you've been up to We're sitting at home on our own <laughs> <laughs> we've made an album that's what we did oh, wow. and I, we, we during lockdown it was quite difficult because pete's in ireland and i'm in staffordshire but we right. managed it somehow I know it's just, it's quite good, I think. Don't you we think? We stayed so? in wow. our bubble. We followed all the rules. Um, um, and Alan could come over when whenever the rules allowed. But uh, at one point, because I'm in actually the Republic of Ireland, which is still technically part yeah. of Europe, they had border guards. So I had to sneak Alan in <laughs> on the, the back roads, you see. Uh, but we, that's the music must go on. You know, we sort of pushed through there. But there was a chance that we'd be stopped. And oh, I have yeah. to explain to them that Alan is actually my lover. <laughs> and, uh, and we're, having a tryst. we're having a tryst between north and south and they'd have to pass us on then of course <laughs> so, of course yeah so it's allowed um, Sorry enough, it's actually out today we should be we celebrating like Ron Peter shouldn't we we are yeah, on this show we are on we are on the ball and time. yeah we'll promote you absolutely fantastic what's it called what's the album called Ron Peter it's open hearts open minds Wow. Um, and nice. I had my friend, uh, my friend and neighbour, who's a fantastic pop artist. I got her to um, to do a. It's called an infinity loop. Uh, this painting here, I don't know if you can see. Yeah. This was a, wow. an original painting with with Alan, and we're kind of we're kind of looking, you know, into an eternal loop, if you like. Oh, yeah. And Alan came up with the idea of of open hearts, open minds, because it's one of the lyrics for one of the songs. 
uh, called Look at the Stars Now, Mama. And, uh, and you were talking about Brian earlier. I, I'm trying yeah. to figure out uh, pretty much every album we've done. Uh, there's been a song about stars and galaxies on there. Um, yeah. And because uh, it's always based on a conversation I have with, with Brian. When I'm, I mean, he was best man at my first wedding. I mean, I, I love the man dearly. But as I said, he's too expensive. Now. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I did have a word with him a wee while ago. And I said, Brian, I, I must take some credit for, for your career insofar as uh, you know, you spent a long time, maybe two and a half years on a tour coach with, with us, where you really learned to explain very, very complicated things to very stupid people. <laughs> and uh, he said, he said, I'll actually give that to you, Pete. I think, and we, we laughed about it, you know, because on the tour coach, he, I'd come off with it. I was reading a, book, a history book. Um, our backing singer came off with a copy of Her, uh, Hello magazine. And Brian would come off with a book, which to you and me would read the same back to front or upside down. And he's just... <laughs> It was just Greek. It was, you know, it was just hieroglyphs, you know. But that, that was the that was the fun we had. Uh, you know, I mean, we had more fun than that. Let me what I want to know is, why does, why, what I want to know is, why does Brian still look 12 years old and, and you look like, well, uh, a bit older? Old man. Old man. Old man. Yeah. August. Well, he is younger than me, but um, right. he runs 20 miles a day, um, as far as I know, and he has a personal trainer, and he only allows himself one one bottle of champagne after each gig, which he shares with uh, a couple of his inner circle. Um, and when I last went to see him, he was down in Belfast and he did his show. And I, I have to say, it was really impressive. It was about four, no, more than that, about 12,000 people in a, the massive, uh, yeah. the, we've got the um, the Harlan and Wolf venue down there. It's been built purposefully for big crowds. And I was sort of halfway through this thing when it went right over my head. I couldn't understand a damn thing he was going on about, right? And I was thinking, there can't be, uh, you know, 6,000 people in here that are smarter than me. I just think they're here to see Brian, right? Must be. Because he's just so gorgeous. He is gorgeous. <laughs> so, he is I, so you know, I was thinking, like, they're, all, they're all braving it out, but he yeah. must have lost them as well, right? He's got such a baby face, hasn't he? Yeah, hasn't he? He's a good looking boy. And you know what? We could never hope to meet a nicer man. He is what you, what you see is what you get there on, on the TV. He's, he's just like that. He is he's childlike in his wonder of things, but then he's got this mad, massive mathematical brain. I used to have times with him when we tried, we didn't have much money back in the day, but I'd bring him back to the, the flat and the, he couldn't even make a cup of tea. And um, and I said, Brian, that's a damn good strategy. So the first cup of tea you ever make for someone, mess it up, right? And then you get tea made for yeah, you. Yeah, but that's the thing. You see, I can't cook. <laughs> ah. Ah. Uh, and now you know the reason why I don't cook. This is it, very good. Very good, because my... I don't remember which husband it was, but my <laughs> first husband, I think, <laughs> as I said, said to me, um, you know, darling, you know, when I messed up some cooking, he said, darling, you are so good at so many other things. Please, no cooking. <laughs> <laughs> That's like my life. Yeah, it's just Alan's got the same vibe going on. <laughs> my, my partner's absolutely the worst. I and mean, it's not because she pretends she's just actually hopeless. She burns, she just get the cooker and like play, making toast ones. So I just, uh, yeah. it's just pointless, pointless. Oh, no, you, were, you were married to a Debbie though, weren't you? I was, no, I was with a Debbie. <laughs> well, let's, let's not talk about my, my past relationships. <laughs> and, and, many of got, them. and you've got two Debbies here. Can I just ask a very quick question that's totally irrelevant to what we've been saying? <laughs> okay. But why is the Guinness in Ireland? Why does it taste better than the Guinness here? Oh. Um, it could be a combination of things because we were trying to figure out why they taste different between different pubs. That and this is Donegal, where it's uh, this is this is Guinness land, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah. And I've, I've heard all sorts of things uh, from the water to the the formula. It doesn't transport across the the, um, the thing. I, I think I think they're spitting on it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you said that England quite possibly because the vitriol between uh, this Brexit thing is. Um, it's thrown a real wedge down the island, you know, and they've thrown Northern Ireland under a bus. So don't, don't be surprised if someone's messing with it, right? Ah, there you go. But well, I'm talking about years ago, the first time I went to Ireland, to Dublin, mm. um, and um, it was just, it was like nectar, I the Guinness. Nectar's the word, definitely. Isn't you, it, Debbie? You, you have to if have a taste for this, really, because it's not everyone's into sort of the molasses type you know, heavy drink like that. But uh, yeah. I know that it's such an amazing uh, beverage is they, they give it to uh, macrobiotics for um, uh, their, their diets. You know, it's like a macrobiotic uh, meal for some people. Wow. Yes. Uh, so I'd, I'd, I'd be all about that recommendation for my doctor pretty much every time I go to see. I agree. 
Can I just ask, how did you boys all get together in the very beginning? How did you meet and how did you know each other? Well, it involves another ex who was, my ex was Peter's boss at a job in, he had in London in 1990. And I was running a nightclub, well, DJing at night, I think a party I used to run and Pete was sort of over getting into the whole dance scene. And he just well, I was, I was down hanging, here around, hanging around, hoping to get friends. Yeah, no. just really friends. <laughs> didn't work then, did it? <laughs> it worked. <laughs> I, I was again. I was so poor that I hung around the bar. Some some would take pity on me and buy me a beer or something. But uh, I was complaining to um, uh, Kath, his boss, about um, my, boss, my boss, your boss. Oh, she was your boss. Eventually, well, yeah, but... don't worry about it. Um, I was saying, look, I'm, I'm really struggling with this this record I'm working on, and um, you know, would Alan be interested in having a look at it, see if he could fix it? And uh, she was like, she introduced us, and Alan sort of listened to my scenario I had and he was quite happy to come over to the my little studio I had a very humble little studio very limited amount of equipment but on the mixing board I had a song called you're the best thing and um and he he listened to it and uh he sort of the first thing he said like he, he got rid of a whole lot of stuff I've had in there and he made me start with just the one kick drum going like like that and I was going no one's going to listen to this damn thing for 32 bars what the hell is that about this is not for you it's for other DJs so they can lock the groove with other records so they're in sync, right? So they can cross between them. And I was like, that's it. That's brilliant. This guy's good club knowledge, club kudos. And we kept going at it till we got that record out. And then it just went word of mouth. And that was the beginning of, of Dream. In fact, uh -huh. Alan, you're responsible the name, for the name. Where did the name come from? Well, who thought of the name? Yeah. Does, it, does it mean anything? It doesn't mean anything at all, ultimately. We, we, we had, um, <laughs> again, because we had gigs. We had gigs at my, and we'd make music and we didn't have a name. We just make music and we thought, oh, we best get something. So we had a bit of a, a sort of tete a tete. And we have different stories. Pete's got something about the Dream Boys, which I, I don't like that I, story. I, at I all. wanted to name I'm it like, sure like what the strippers. That's about. Like strippers or something, doesn't like it? Like the strippers, yeah. <laughs> like the strippers, yeah. <laughs> oh, not, yeah. Really? But I, I think it was something else. I just, I just like the name Dream. thought, we just chuck a call on and uh, for whatever reason, so <laughs> lots of it, there's lots of things said about that as well, which which it, it was just done. And unfortunately, when the web, it's about the time the web was all starting. When, the, and if you, when you put the call in, you, you couldn't search for us. So once it, the website sort of the internet started, we completely screwed ourselves completely in, in oh, advertently. Yeah. So. It's an illegal character in HTML. It's a reserve for the top bar and the left. Anyway, we put D stroke ring, but it was like um, you know, you had D influence and D light and uh, and K class, mm -hmm. and they were M people, you know. So it yes. just sort of seemed to be of, of the time, you know, it just worked. Fantastic. And then you know, it I takes ages music. then because people hear the song, but they don't know that the song belongs to D Ream, and then they don't know the song D Ream, and then I'm the singer, he's the DJ. That that took nearly two, three years. Yeah. And many, many releases before it got there, and we went from its own. We did a remix of the remix, which was Pete Tong's essential tune, and then the next week Sasha's mix was essential tuned, and mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And it built up, and, and I think he, Dave Morales has mixed it as well, hasn't he, Al? Have you heard? You girls heard of Dave Morales? Come on, Pete. Yeah. Our yeah. children will really probably. Really big names, really big names <laughs> in that world. And then, as as we were sort of like flying up the charts, then we had to follow up with you. Uh, things going to be better, and um, mm -hmm. that that's when kind of Alan and I uh, were seeing eye to eye because he was going like. Uh, there was a lot of pressure on the label and stuff because I was a pretty boy to make me stand up front and do more pop stuff. And uh, and in fact, you know, I did have a wish to have a number one record and I was really pushing towards that um, at all costs. And unfortunately, one of the costs was that Alan says, look, it's going too pop. And I didn't listen to him. And, and you know, I, I live to regret that. But we've, we've made our peace since and, and we still believe that uh, that relationship we had is still fertile and it will produce and we are produced this album. Um, it's, it's probably our best work today. Every artist says that, I know, uh, but it is with our, our best work. And uh, it's, it's, it's holding its head up, in my estimation, against everything we've done before. So where can we get this? We can get it online and we can download yeah. it? The usual places, your Apple music, and we, we're doing it ourselves. So we, we have actually taken on the whole yeah. release. Yeah, that, which Alan, is quite interesting. It's not on Apple Music, it's on iTunes, right? iTunes, yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 Oh, so what, what's it called so we can, our viewers can start downloading it? It's got again open hearts, open minds. But yes, open I mean, hearts, if you want CDs, minds. they're on. You just look it up. It's on a Bandcamp account because we're doing it ourselves. We don't. Brilliant. We don't do all the streaming stuff. Spotify. We, that. we, stream, we, we understood that, that um, Alan had a paycheck in from um, Spotify. Call it that. 
I'm calling it his body face so I don't get liable or anything. <laughs> But uh, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, yeah. uh, we found out that half of the content on Spotify, who I didn't say that, uh, is, wait, is but bogus. It's made up by them to cut the costs of what they give. Uh. To and then in addition to that, the, the actual per stream, uh, you know, uh, cost is so infinitesimally small for us that he had nearly a quarter of a million streams on the project he was working on. He got like something like, I don't know, 20 quid or something. Yeah. It's, it's just like what happened to us as actors when, you know, uh, UK Gold and all of those channels mm. came up and all of the shows that we've been doing for years and we get repeats of like 20p. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Uh, I mean, artists, artists now can only really make their buck from performing live. Well, right? I mean, you, we can't we, do either. We, they've killed live. They've put their boot on our neck. So we can't perform live, and then yeah. streaming's been what people do in lockdown. Yeah. So we've yeah, been cut off. I mean, what, what year anything. did um, it can only get better? What year did that come out? Um, it came out. Alan, mm -hmm. help me here. I, I stopped between ninety three and ninety four. Which was it? It, it? it came out a couple of times. I think it was the number one in ninety four December. Mm -hmm. I think it came out ninety three first. Right. But you must oh. have seen an absolute change, complete change in the music business from how you sell records, yeah. how you perform, yeah. how. You, you know, yeah. all the streaming and everything else. It's just like a minefield, isn't it now? Oh, yeah. it's horrendous. Well, I, 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 anyway, so. I have two uh, daughters that they're 19 and <laughs> 17, and they were over here just recently. And uh, I said to them, so what's 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 top of the charts for you? What's number one? They were like, what is what is the number one? Yeah. Well, uh, well, well, they don't anymore, do they? It doesn't no, work that way anymore, no, does it? it? Yeah. She's into um, Billie Eilish and all that, and it's very good, really good. Yes, really, that is good. I don't know where Billie Eilish is in regards to any other artists. I can't. Top of the Pops was a great, um, uh, it was a wonderful thing. You know, you could bring together, uh, you know, MOR bands and a house band. And it, it just like, it was great to see all of that, you know? It's fabulous, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and real I mean, I think the yeah. charts that they go by now is the download charts, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, but they didn't even know who, who was on there. I mean, they, well, they, they, know, they were listening they on TikTok. They have a chart out every Sunday because my daughter does it on the radio. Okay. Um, so there's a chart every Sunday. Um, you can listen to it on Great British Radio. Which yeah. Actually, my, my husband wants to interview you for that, if you don't mind. And, um, you know, you do your top ten as well. Um, but, yeah, she does the chart rundown every Sunday. So there is a, there is a top Oh, the charts are there, but yeah. just the kids don't listen to them. My yeah, they don't take it the seriously. They didn't even want it. Yeah. So, guys, so what next? What do you want to do next? What would you like to tour? A, a yeah. big international sure, we tour? Want we want all these restrictions to be lifted. We want people to get over themselves and get out there and let's have some fun because it's been, I mean, most governments seem to me to be fun sponges, you know, no matter what government of any color, red, blue, green, whatever gets in, seem to want to put, uh, put the fun to bed because yeah. it's human nature to want to be together. And I would love us to be out there entertaining people. I want people to come to Ireland and I want you to take me on a, a pub crawl. <laughs> Darling, I'm definitely you, coming. Well, it'll, be, it'll be Wednesday with me. You'll go out on the Friday and we'll be back by the Wednesday, just so you're welcome. Okay? And I'm tagging along. <laughs> no problem. We've got plenty of accommodation here. Oh, Thank great. you. We'll We're there. serious. We're we, there. We, uh, there's nothing more we than can I broadcast love. Broadcast from here. Yeah. We do, yeah. We, I, love, I love the Irish. I love the fun that I have when I'm with the Irish people. So That's it's it. just. Fab. It's so always laughing. It's always a lovely. It's like being with the Scots as well. It's it's something that's this. powerful. It's so funny, isn't it? Because you say you know you're Irish, you're proud of being Irish. You're Scottish. We're afraid to be Scottish, but nobody says we're British. I Do think I think you should. I think you should. You know, you need to find that. Uh, and you said my time in England, all the English people I've met, fabulous, absolutely fabulous. I never had one piece of prejudice I leveled at me at all. From the only thing I have is people telling me to slow down, but that's fair enough, right? <laughs> well, listen, guys. Thank More you. Swimming. It's been, it's been no problem. A pleasure, pleasure to meet you. And Absolutely. good luck with the album. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Good luck, guys. guys. Bye. 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 Oh, aren't they just stunning, those boys? I just oh, love them. Do you so like an Irish man? I love it. I love an Irish. Oh yeah. Man. I was married to one for seventeen years, and I'm still actually very close to him, Frank, who well, was actually funny. yeah, he was Irish, brought up in Glasgow. Theatre director, absolutely brilliant, and liked a little little tipple or two. <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that, am I, with accents? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, wasn't bad. that wasn't bad, was it? That with a shillelagh on my arm and a tinkle in my eye, I'd be after Tipperary in the morning. <laughs> Thank you. That was my Irish thing. So we're a gorgeous show. 
Lovely. Thank you, Linda and Debbie, for stepping into the breach as yes. usual, being such such wonderful friends of our show. We so appreciate you being here. Really and I don't do. know what's happened to Sherry and Harriet. God knows where no. they've gone, but you know, <laughs> hey, 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 obviously. <laughs> Gone out with an Irishman for five days. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. No, it's me. That That's does what that. it is. <laughs> anyway, guys, we will see you on Monday. Take care. See Bye. you soon. Bye. Bye. Saparista are proud sponsors of The Wonderbird Show. Treat yourself to the wonderful taste of the Mediterranean supplied by local artisans.